Bobby Boris Pickett was the brains and voice behind the song Monster Mash, which he and Lenny Capizzi wrote when Bobby was 24 years old. After graduating from high school, Bobby served three years in Korea in the United States Army Signal Corps. After returning home, Bobby made the trek west to Hollywood to pursue an acting career. It was there he started performing in a band called The Cordials in 1961. While performing doo-wop songs, Bobby would from time to time break into impersonations of famous movie actors. His impersonation of Boris Karloff during the spoken section of the Diamond song Little Darlin' was a major hit with the audience. The Cordell soon came to the attention of record producer and songwriter Gary Paxton. Under his guidance, the Cordells recorded a few singles that didn't fare too well. But in 1962, Bobby and the Cordell's leader, Lenny Capizzi, decided to compose a novelty number for release at Halloween. The song took its inspiration from the mashed potato, at that time a dance craze. The song took on a Frankenstein motif of a scientist creating human life. Pickett's half-spoken, half-sung narration included a brief snatch of a heavily accented Bela Lugosi impersonation, as well as the Karloff voice. That song was Monster Mash. Bobby said the song wrote itself in a half an hour and took less than a half hour to record. Producer Gary Paxton had already made the song Alley Oop, a number one hit with a scratch group called the Hollywood Argyles. Paxton was therefore receptive to the absurdity of Monster Mash, adding atmospheric sound effects to accompany Pickett. Among these were a creaking door created by pulling a nail from a piece of wood and the bubbling beaker noise from blowing through a straw in a glass of water. The pianist at the recording session was Leon Russell, but Leon got to the session late and only appears on the single's B-side, Monster Mash Party. Within two months, Monster Mash had sold a million copies and was the number one record in the United States. It was reissued on several occasions and in 1973, it reached number three in Britain. As a Halloween anthem, Monster Mash has been regularly dusted off in October by DJs across the country. The song has also been included in film soundtracks, including that of Halloween 3, and in the television series The Simpsons, Cheers, and Roseanne, and many more. Pickett occasionally appeared at oldie shows where he'd come out in a lab coat stained with fake blood to introduce his performance by saying, I will now sing a medley of my hit. One of Bobby's most memorable performances was with Dick Clark on American Bandstand, October 13, 1964. Pickett's facial expressions are priceless and well worth watching. I'll put a link to the video in the description below so you can watch it. You will see the comedian and the actor in Bobby come out. In 1962, the Beach Boys backed Bobby on his song. This was very early Beach Boys as you can see a young David Marks on guitar in the background behind Brian Wilson. The Beach Boys enjoyed the song themselves and did a good cover of it in live performances with Mike Love doing his monster imitations. Mike Love still does the song in his Beach Boys shows come Halloween time. Even the boss, Bruce Springsteen, will jam out on the Monster Mash in his live shows come October, and I might add, does a very rocking job of it. The Monster Mash has become the national anthem of Halloween. After the success of Monster Mash, Bobby kept after his acting career. He took small acting roles in television shows, including the Beverly Hillbillies, Bonanza, T.J. Hooker, and a little seen film called Death Master, about a vampire who lures in a devout following of hippies. Then in 1972, as Dr. Frankenstein in the film Monster Mash, the movie based on a 1966 play Pickett had written with Sheldon Allman. 
He popped up on the music scene again in 1975 with a Star Trek parody called Star Trek, and 10 years later released yet another spin on his debut classic called Monster Rap. But neither song would measure up to Pickett's much buzzed about debut hit. His autobiography, Monster Mash, Half Dead in Hollywood, was published and is still available on Amazon. Though he would end up performing the same song over and over for over 40 years, Pickett never got sick of it. That song was his baby, says Stuart Hirsch, who started managing Bobby in 1989. He loved performing it. Over the years, Pickett developed a shtick that he'd break out for each performance, which he'd usually play at horror and fandom conventions. He'd take to the stage wearing a white blood-stained lab coat, featuring jumping spiders to go along with his facial expressions. When asked about his one and only hit, Bobby said, The song wrote itself in about a half hour, took less than a half an hour to record. I didn't make millions, but I have been paying the rent for all these years with just one song. Bobby Pickett's life was, in many ways, characterized by second chances, wrote Drew Millard of Vice. He didn't make it in acting, but managed to find his way into the annals of music history. Pickett experienced great personal adversity only to find redemption. In the 1970s, his young son drowned in a pool, deeply impacting him. One day he remarked to his manager that he thought he might have a daughter out there somewhere. The pair searched for and found the woman they suspected to be his daughter. The DNA test came up negative. However, a couple of weeks later, a different woman called Pickett claiming to be his daughter. They met up at the airport and they looked so similar that they didn't even have to do a DNA test. Suddenly Pickett had a family. He went from this loner to a family guy and he loved it. Pickett adored his daughter and his new grandchildren, spending the holidays with his new family. It was just a blessing, Stuart Hurst says. Bobby's final public appearance took place in November 2006, 10 years after he reunited with his long-lost daughter, Bobby died from leukemia on April 25, 2007. It really got to me, Hurst says of Bobby's illness. Pickett performed until the very end, undergoing regular blood transfusions to maintain his health. I'd call him up at the hospital and he'd get on the phone and say in his Dracula voice, Stu, there's nothing like fresh blood. He'd get his new blood and he'd go out and sing Monster Mash. God bless him. My thoughts here are, it seems that when Bobby took on Stuart Hirsch as a manager, his life and career started looking up a lot more. Stuart helped him re-record Monster Mash as Bobby didn't own the master tapes. Stuart also helped him find family again. He also keeps a website running and I will leave its address in the description box. I would think Bobby Boris Pickett found a very good manager and a true friend in Stuart Hirsch and that just don't happen a lot in this business. So, do you have any thoughts or memories on the Monster Mash or Bobby himself? If so, leave a message in the comments section below. I gotta run. Hope you all have a very happy and safe Halloween. Take care and thanks for watching.